If you're just tuning in, we're discussing leveraging social media to grow our businesses. And please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 All right, so we still have our guest with us. Larry, so before we went on a break, you mentioned something about... Uh, now, I cannot remember because my... <laughs> but the question I had in my head was... Are we all meant to be on social media to be able to make money from social media? Um, I don't know if you understand the question because um, when, when we were reading and we did a lot of research, there are so many things. It's like a value, complete value chain, right? Is it that it is only the people that are the faces on social media that get the big bulk or you can actually be behind the scene and truly earn very good money, you know, from social media work? I mean, it's, it's possible uh, for you to earn without necessarily being on social media. I, I mean, the best expression, perhaps the best expression of that is to think about skit makers. I mean, the skit maker or, or, or the, the main guy in the skits are often guys or are oftentimes the very popular guys, okay? We talked about Tao recently. We talked about Mr. Macaroni and a few other guys, okay? They're very popular. But the truth is, a lot of the time, there are guys behind the scene that works with them to ensure that they throw out all of those beautiful, interesting, and engaging content. Imagine the guy who sits in a studio to edit all of those video skit content. Okay? Imagine the video guy, the guy who's always hand handling the camera to ensure that, I mean, that content comes out and eats the spot. At times, most of these uh, skits actually have directors, somebody who's running through the script, saying this is what you should say, this is how you should go through the flow. I mean, all of these guys are not popular. Most of them, we don't know them. But the truth is, they've built over time a career that helps them to support uh, most of the guys that you see on social media. Just as you said, social media is a completely new world okay, that is creating value every day. Now, your best bet would be to be on social media because social media converges the most valuable resource in the world, which is human being. But it's very possible for you not to be on social media, or for you to be a quiet influence on social media and still make a lot of money. What's important is that you have to understand what the business value is. You have to find yourself in the value chain. I mean, everybody who understands business understands the whole concept of value chain. Mm -hmm. Understand the value chain and ask yourself, where exactly in the chain do I want to play? And, and play it well, okay? Play it so well that people either online or offline recognize that and they're able to give you jobs to do just so you can contribute to the value that everybody's offering and you all can make money. Absolutely. That's what I'll say on that, yeah. Okay, so my question would um, go more into um, business finance. So there's a lot of traditional institutions that believe that, you know, being online or just having a digital presence m might erode or they're afraid it will erode best business practices. Now, do you think that there are laws that govern, you know, digitization of businesses, number one, and number two, do you think we'll come to a point? So the businesses have moved online, but the financiers have not followed them. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, because every business at some point needs access to finance. Do you see that happening in the future where um, finances and investors, so I'm not talking about the tech people um, investing in techpreneurs, but other investors will begin to trust online business enough to invest in them? Yeah, I mean, your question is, do I think that in the future that we have, my response is yes. Is it happening today? No. But we should admit that innovation always leads regulation. Mm -hmm. Innovation always leads finance. Mm -hmm. Innovation always leads structure, okay? So where we are right now with uh, social media and the evolution of business via social media is still very innovative. And so a lot of what we're seeing is speculative, is preliminary. People are trying out things. And so it is not strange for financiers and funders like banks to be susceptible to say, hey, I have a business, I sell 55,000 shoes on, on Instagram, give me a 15 million naira loan. Of course, the banks will be uh, suspicious of your business. I mean, they are today. Some of them are more welcoming, but generally most of them are still suspicious. Why? Because they've not figured out uh, uh, how to support in a sustainable way the new world of business via the internet. But I'm very certain as the internet continue to evolve, as acceptance continue to grow, as mobile penetration continue to increase, as internet and availability continue to grow, it is inevitable that we're going to do more online than offline. I mean, 2020 is the best barometer of this statement. We had many months of lockdown where most businesses had to forcefully digitize 
and move themselves online. As digitization continues to grow, it is inevitable that funding we have to support that. I mean, that's, that, that's straightforward for me. Your other questions were, were, was with respect to uh, uh, other businesses moving online. I mean, I, I also think that very much like the first response that I gave, that is inevitable also. The truth is, 2020, aside from COVID and the pandemic, has sort of opened our eyes to possibilities online. Today, I know people are actually paying for tours online. Okay, can you imagine paying a tour company 700,000 just to go to Bali? Okay, just to go to Europe. And all that you do is not like you're going to travel to Europe. They are going to send you a link and you're going to visualize no, me, me, in a you... virtual environment what <laughs> Europe looks like. Okay, so it's we're, we're going to get and, and uh, uh, the whole world is going to move, maybe not completely, but substantially many of us are going to do businesses online. And it's going to be fun. Well, it's going to be rewarding. It's going to become the new normal. Larry, so I'm very... well, in yeah. Nigeria, we have value for our money. We will not do that one yet. <laughs> Not in Nigeria. <laughs> Let me just follow up with a fast question, please, before Uti comes to that. Do you see, because as you were talking and I was just looking, do you think that um, organizations will begin to build APIs with social media to enrich their data? Because I was just thinking about that as you're talking. Will there be that open source? Will, will we have APIs tied to these platforms to enable people maybe evaluate some of the, the trust issues that they have? Today, you already have ones, okay? Mm -hmm. And I know that because I work in technology, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, I, I've had to sit in meetings with not just Indian partners. I mean, the guys in India are very, very excited about the possibility of social media, but also in Nigeria. People know today that the best set of data, the cleanest set of data, the most authentic set of data you get about somebody is more likely available on social media than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, um, I could tell you today that I'm a pastor, but if you did your digital due diligence on social media, you probably get a better idea of what I represent, what my values are, than what I tell you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what uh, forward-looking businesses and technology companies are doing is to build extension, extended API, to sort of uh, 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 um, aggregate some of the thoughts, values, sentiments that you share online. What it does is it, it helps uh, interested companies and organizations to have a better holistic end-to-end -end idea of who their targeted audience is. So this guy could actually tell you that, hey, I want to bank with your bank. I want to be a customer of Bank ABC. I'm 35 years old. I'm jobless. Okay? But next week, you could actually see him say, oh, I just got a job at an uh, ABC company. Now, getting access or having access to that information that this guy has made public helps the bank understand that this guy that was an unemployed customer two weeks ago is not an employed customer today. So we can sell him salary account. Mm. We can offer him loans. Mm. We can offer him car financing. Mm. We can offer him house rent uh, loans. So uh, uh, technology companies and, and also uh, uh, interested companies today, they are looking at the vast vista of social media and the incredible opportunity it offers to help them better understand their uh, consumers and targeted audience. But more importantly, to give them enough information to, so just so they are able to target uh, their proposition uh, okay. to the needs and requirements of those targeted audiences. Uh, is the reality today. is not something to wait for the future about. Okay. Um, lots of businesses making money through media. You can have product display, number of followers on TikTok. YouTube can be monetized, brand influencing, teaching, and so many more. We agree with you, and I think this is what we're talking about. Not everyone that has followers is making money, just so you're no, sure. You Uti, you yeah, you, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Um, so, yes, I was saying that I wanted to talk about content, just a little bit about content strategy. Hmm. Um, because this content, we're all creating this fantastic, rich content. But the platform doesn't belong to us. Hmm. So if Facebook is down tomorrow, it takes my platform, it takes my content with it. It could very well take my business with it. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen over the years that, you know, even though it's free to get on social media, these companies, these platforms are also businesses that need to thrive. So the fact is, you know, there have been all these antitrust issues. There have all been all these issues about algorithms. And we see the difference between organic and paid content. So I'd just like you to share your thoughts around, A, how to make it work for an average business or for, for an entrepreneur that's listening today how to make the best of their content strategy to get the best reach, but also the, from the perspective of the platforms themselves. Um, okay, I, I got, um, I got um, your question more towards the end. 
and I think where, that's where the meat of the question is. So I'm going to I'm going to try to start from there. Uh, how exactly should entrepreneurs play up their content strategy? Okay, um, like I said when I started, the most important consideration for your strategy, for your social media strategy, is your targeted audience. Okay, and so understanding uh, your audience helps you to target your content to them. I mean, that is one. Uh, and that is fundamental. The second uh, uh, advice I like to give, and I also need to pay more attention to it, is that you need to humanize your strategy. You need to humanize your content. So today you see a lot of content, because there's a proliferation of content on, on social media, uh, you've got to do much more than the other person to gain attention. Like I said, the most valuable uh, uh, achievement you can have on social media is to gain attention. That's a whole world of noise out there. Okay? And one of the ways to grab attention is to humanize your content. You see a lot of companies, a lot of organizations, and I'm sorry, I mean, a lot of banks do this. They are all focused on the services they offer, forgetting that their audiences are actually humans. Okay? And um, today, I see that most people are evolving towards that. One of the things you realize is, today is Friday, for example. Friday means something to Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Now, the guy who understands what Friday means to Nigerians in Lagos and Nigerians in Kano and Nigerians in Abuja is the guy who is going to grab their attention. What does Friday mean to the young Lagosian about going out to the bar? Or is it going out to church? Or is it in northern Nigeria where Friday means going to the mosque? What does Friday mean? You've got to humanize your content. And not just humanize your content, you've got to target it to your audience. That is true. The third thing is that you have to understand that... Uh, uh, one of the things that makes content appealing to people is dynamism, okay? So let's say you're a bank on social media, and I use bank too, too frequently. Let me talk about a small business, a small business entrepreneur who perhaps makes shoes. Now, what you do is to make shoes, eh? and you, you've been targeting your content towards your targeted audience, and, and you've been humanizing your content. Another way to pay attention uh, uh, to the kind of content you push out and to continue to win is to make it dynamic. I mean, if you make shoes and you talk about shoes every day, every morning, noon, and night for seven days, after a while, even if people don't leave your page, they're going to tune out. So you've got to figure out that on this social media, not only are people very impatient, I mean, their attention span is a couple of seconds, yeah. if not maybe minutes. So you've got to be dynamic, even though you sell shoes, you're going to have to connect shoes to each thing. You're going to have to connect shoes to travels. You're going to have to connect shoes to faith. To You're going to have to connect shoes to family. Absolutely. You have to make your content so dynamic to the point where it is in that dynamism that they fall in love with your brand oh, okay. and the essence of it. It's fundamental, but beyond it being fundamental, it's one of the success uh, 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 factor for, for winning on social media. Oh. I, I don't know if I... If yeah, I, got I think you got a, a part of the... Uh, on yeah, that, I think... Uh, I think uh, you did. Um, that, that's my point. I think the only part that you didn't get, but we've sadly run out of the time, is how to co protect your own content since the platform, you don't own it. I think that was the first part she said. But we don't have time anymore. Thank you so much, Larry, because, I mean, we it was really worth our time. We hope to bring you back again. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, ladies. Uti and AK. <laughs> All right, so please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 6 a.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Wayshow Africa 1 on Twitter or at Wayshow Africa on Facebook and um, Instagram as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. If your business is not on the internet, then your business will be out of business. It's as simple as that. That's from Bill Gates. We'll see you on Monday, live at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. <laughs> I'm so happy to say Monday. <laughs>